Hey guys, we got a pretty unique project for you today. We're gonna to be converting a wood deck to a stone deck, and we're gonna be using a product called Silka Systems, and this allows you to take a standard timber frame deck and turn it into a stone or brick patio, and we're gonna walk you through step by step how you can do this. Now, one of the reasons why you'd even wanna consider doing something like this is simple, because it offers your customer more options, more flexibility, more versatility. When you can go out there and you can not just offer your customer a standard wood deck, but a stone deck as well, you may land an extra job. Guys, for the Silica system, it starts out just like any other timber frame deck or wood frame deck. 12 inches on center, your standard deck construction, but a few things you gotta be aware of. Your joists have to be perfectly level. If you got any of this rocking motion going in it, you've gotta correct that before you can lay down the next step. The true flat level is one of the basic components that you gotta start out with. But once you've got that down, then it's just a simple grid system that connects 12 inches, or is it 16 inches, isn't it? 16 is on center, but we do one other step before we can lay the grid system down, and I wanna show you what that is. I'm gonna take you in real close right now, guys. We can see that all of the rafters are wrapped with a membrane, and let's go find out exactly what that membrane is called. Okay, so this is the guy that actually <laughs> created this. What is this called, and what is its function? Joist tape. Joist tape, and why do you, Mike, why do you gotta use that? Typically what it does is it'll extend the life of the joist. Uh, you're reducing the amount of water laying on the wood. It's laying on a, another product that's water resistant. Okay. So your joists and your deck therefore last longer. So there's a couple extra steps that I see with this Please system so fight. far. We've got the membrane that goes over the framing. Then you've got the grate, which is the extra step on top of that. Right. Then you have a membrane that goes over the top of the grate Specifically system. for tile. Bellgard had asked us to come up with an idea of deadening the sound. Uh, the porcelain pavers have sort of a ringing, clicking sound to them. So they asked us to come up with an idea of deadening that sound. Well, with the, the silica mat, it deadens the sound. It's also permeable, so the water still goes through but the cushion deadens the sound. It also makes the tile tighter in place. Once we get the sand set, everything is solid. Deadens the sound, it makes it a little bit nicer product. Is it a game changer if you don't have that in there? The sound is completely different. And so this is about the extra step for quality for your yes. customer. Yes. Can you get by without it? Tell me, Mike, straight What'll up. What'll happen is our recommended method is the silica mat and sand. That being said, if you don't want to go the silica mat route, we recommend uh, at least uh, geotextile, and then we have our flexible spacer that will absorb some of the sound, but nowhere near to the degree the mat does. So when these guys are going to get this for their own project, mm -hmm. does it come kind of one dealer will still handle all of this? So they're not going one place, Correct. another place, another place. Correct. The matting comes from us, which comes from their dealer. Okay. The flexible spacers come from us, which would come from their dealer. If they decide to use uh, the geotextile, you know, there's dozens of kinds out there they can use. As long as it's permeable, that's fine. Okay. Uh, and the uh, sand, whatever your dealer's recommending for this tile or that tile, that's fine too. It just needs to be a polymeric sand that locks everything together. That's good to know. Yeah. Any other tips or tricks these guys should understand while they're doing it? Big thing, deck's got to be level. It can be pitched, yep. but it's got to be flat and level. If it's not level, what happens is you'll get a rocking. You can make a standard wooden deck where it's a little bit off and the boards will bend enough the boards to make up the discrepancy. Porcelain papers don't bend that well. They don't, they don't bend at all. all. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. So, they crack over time. So if it's, not, if it's not level, you'll get a wobbling, you can get an edge somebody could trip over. There's certain safety hazards you want to watch out for. And if the deck's level, the job is smooth. There's no problem. Good to know. All right, well, let's, let's see how this goes. So is there any thing specific we need to know as we lay the tape down, guys? It's pretty simple. The idea behind the tape is if you look at an old deck, often where you see rot is around those screws because the moisture gets through there. This provides a seal to protect the top of that joist from rot. You don't have to do anything special to pre-clean the surface before laying the tape down? I normally wipe them off. So no special prep really needed. One of the things too I need to point well, out you know. is you use the same tape underneath the rafters hangers. I want to show something like uh, we were talking about you've got this overlapped right over the actual timber framing right and then you actually 
you stagger well, the joints. I mean, right. I've noticed that, right? right? Is that norm? Is that well? You don't want to. You don't want screws right next to each other. It weakens the joist a little bit. I mean, yep. not not noticeably, but if you stagger them, you don't have that issue. Okay. Out here, we're not really supporting anything because it's supported by this. So yep. at this point, these pieces are just blocking. Okay. Okay. When we run it over, you basically take a sawzall and you follow the contour of your deck so that every piece that's cut is supported because that's important. Okay. Uh, and it's very easy to get, you know, get the shape of your deck. If you had a, uh, in a regular shape, yep. you just follow it along, cut it off as needed, and everything fits. Basically brace straps that go across the back. This provides side-to-side -side strength when you push down on it. It does flex. It's designed to flex. If it didn't flex with the freeze thaw and the movement of the deck, it'd break. But the strength here is from here to here. To go this way, these are the these are the most important things are these lines right here to strengthen it. So we want this to be in contact with the joist the whole way. So let's be very clear. Your joist is here. Right. This is the strongest part. So really you've got to get this great system lined up with the joist so that right. you are hitting on the joist. You really shouldn't turn this tile sideways. No. So the orientation of the tile is critical to the overall success and longevity. If you guys install it bass backwards, It'll look fine right away, but I'm going to guess in one to five years, you're going to start to notice that flex, and that's going to be reflected into the tiles, which are going to probably start to crack, bend, break, give you weird edges. The reason this works over, let's say, using plywood yep. and uh, putting a thin set down and putting a tile on, it's going to rot. No matter yep. what you do, that's going to rot. Okay. If you decide to put cement on a deck with a tray, yep. Over time, cement doesn't flex at all, so as your deck moves, the cement will break up. It'll crack. Right. right. This is designed to flex. You feel the flex? Shoot, Mike, have you ever had a job work exactly as planned? Yeah, when I plan it. <laughs> <laughs> There's always something that goes wrong, whether yeah, it be yeah. the measurement's not quite right, or in this situation, we have some lumber that's sagging. So we have to uh, shim it up to make sure it's Where's level. it sagging at? See that moving? So this you low, the, that middle one is low. The middle one's yeah. low, you can see the gap in there. Yep. yep. So we'll have to shim that up to get everything level. Are you gonna shim it underneath or where are you gonna shim it at? Underneath, underneath the grate. So on top of here. So you're not gonna lift up the whole joist. No, we're just gonna use a piece of shingle, provide a gap, and that will bring up the same level as this so we don't create a ridge and have that stone rocking on it. It's like roofing fell. Oh. No, I think oh, I oh, no, 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 let's do that again. No, no. No, no, no. no. Check out the. Ready? All right. Dang, that is dense. So, this is the silica mat. Come on over here, check this out. This is actually a rubber membrane. This is also a recycled product made from recycled tires. Okay, so we're gonna lay the mat out. We gotta come right up to the edge. If you guys decide to cut like that, make sure you're cutting the right layer. We've been doing this a while, but it's easy to go too deep and to cut the roll beneath it. All right, guys, the easiest way to actually cut this, you saw us using a knife, a straight edge. Just go in the house and grab yourself a pair of scissors. It's going to be the safest, fastest, easiest way to cut this stuff. It's heavy material, but it's not so heavy duty that a good old pair of Fisker's house scissors won't take care of it for you. Guys, what we're doing right now is we're just bringing the, the membrane up to the house and leaving just a slight fold so that it can catch the sand. The sand doesn't fall off. So if we left it, the sand could fall out. Guys, you're not gonna believe this. All right, the matting's down. The seams are taped. It's time to start putting some pavers down.
All right, we're gonna crack into the tiles. A couple things we've said it before, guys, is make sure your batches are the same, right, Phil? Out of the first tile is actually critical because it determines how many cuts on the entire project that you're going to be doing. So what we're actually talking about right now is we wanna be able to uh, minimize the amount of cuts or at least hide them. We know we're gonna have cuts no matter what we do, but where they end up is determined by where we start. That's exactly right. We're going to lay this out so that we can hide the cuts and make the least amount and the least difficult cuts possible. That's exactly right. Alright guys, since we're doing it on this membrane, the click and drop method that you'll typically see when you're building a paver patio, not really as necessary, is it? All right, guys, one of the things I want to point out, you can see that we're using spacers just to keep enough separation and consistency as we lay these tiles out. And then that also gives us our space for the silica sand. If we didn't use them, we'd probably be too tight to actually get sand into the joints. What do you notice? One bad tile in here, guys, and it happens. Yeah. I mean, there's not gonna be a perfect job, so I wanna address this with you guys. So you can see right here, okay, now go ahead and step on it, watch right here. And the, the fix for that is we're gonna put a little bit of flexible adhesive underneath that, and that's gonna help soften that and cushion that and actually keep that from having that void space.
right, so we're putting the actual porcelain tile over the stairs. You can see the grid system there, but what we're doing with this part of the build is we're putting the fascia board underneath. We're using a special bull nose tile as the stair edge. And we're gonna use an inlay to compensate for the distance to the next stair riser. Also, another thing to take into consideration is the thickness of the tile so that you don't get too much of an overhang. Okay, so we're doing an inlay right next to the stairs, and this is just to highlight that transition from the deck to the step. And it's actually designed to pull some of the tan colors out of the tile. All right, guys, we're wrapping up the finishing touches on the deck, but we've got to make some tweaks to it before we're ready for the next step. Now, I want to show you guys something. If you come in here, you can see where our lines got off a little bit. Well, that's because we've been working and walking on this thing for two solid days and we ended up actually using the wrong spacers. This is a flexible spacer. We should have used a stiff spacer, but it's not the end of the world. You see how this line is off? We're, I'm just gonna use a screwdriver, pop my lines back in place to get ready for the next step, which is actually applying a polymeric sand. We don't use mortar, we don't use grout because it doesn't flex with the deck, but a polymeric sand, especially the right one, will flex and move as the deck flexes and moves as it goes through a freeze thaw cycle or heats up from the sun. Now the product that we're gonna be using is actually made by Technoseal and it's called Next Gel. After we get all these tiles tweaked and completely straightened out, we're gonna put that down and I'm gonna show you how we use that. Okay, so we're getting ready to put the polymeric sand in. We gotta pop out all of our spacers and then we gotta blow off the deck. We can't have any dirt, we can't have any polymeric sand on any of the tiles any more than we have to. All right, so we're gonna put the polymeric sand down. Now you can dump and go, but I actually wanna just get it right where I gotta get it so that I can sweep it into the joint spaces. It's easier to add a little bit more than it is to subtract. A wise man once taught me that. One of the things to keep in mind guys, you can't water this or sprinkle this like this. All of this extra polymeric sand's gotta come off the face of the tiles before you water it because it will stick like glue. All right, the guys, Phil is actually getting all of the polymeric sand set to the exact right height. He's actually kind of picky about that. Phil, you wanna tell us what we should be looking for with this. Well, you know, in, in my opinion, there's two ways to put polymeric sand in. You can dump it on here and you can rush and you can rush and brush is the method that we refer to. You can take just a little bit of extra time. When I say extra time, I'm talking maybe 10 minutes just to get it set right because it's so much easier to do it right the first time, missed it in. Yes, you can add sand after you've misted it, but it's a little bit more of a pain. You gotta wait till everything dries again. So if you take a few extra minutes now in this step, it's gonna go a lot faster later and actually save you some time. So we just wanna get these joints just filled up enough, not too much, not too little. All right guys, so we've swept the joints. Now we've gotta actually blow them. One of the things to think about is you don't wanna blow the sand out. You just took the time to get everything set. So you're not gonna blow directly on the joint. You're just gonna let the blower idle and blow in the center of the tile and kind of waft the sand away. I want to get all of the excess sand off. I've got some here I want to sweep up and this I want to get cleaned off. This is the point where you get really particular before you put that water in place because 
Once you do it, then the only way to get the excess off instead of using a blower is to 